Hey, what's up guys? Lou here. And um, I want to talk to you guys about a dynasty in the mm, 11th century in Byzantium. I'll get to all the juicy details in a second, in case you have no clue what the heck I'm talking about. Alright, real quick. So when you hear things like political drama, scandalous relationships, deceit, a few shows come to mind. And if you're like me, you like hearing about real people and real historic times. For example, uh, the Borgias, Tudors, the family of Lorenzo de' Medici, and House of Cards. All these shows uh, were based around true people, or maybe maybe not House of Cards, but, you know, political drama that goes hand in hand with the rest of these people. And uh, all these families and dynasties did some really messed up things in their lifetime. And it was brought to the screen for our viewing pleasure. Um... But there's one family in particular, a Byzantine family, uh, that doesn't get much uh, spotlight time. And I just want to kind of, you know, just share a little stories from their past. You know, it might be interesting to you guys. I don't know, maybe you like that stuff. So yeah, um, I just got done reading this book. Well, not just done, but, you know, I read it uh, a few months ago and it's pretty interesting. It's a book by John Carr about the Comanet dynasty. Now, uh, they're not Italian, despite the name sounding Italian. Uh, the Byzantines were like um, a Greek empire. A uh, quick history lesson, um, in case you don't know who the Byzantines are. Um, they were pretty much like um, the Romans, the sequel. Uh, they were passed, uh, passed a torch by the Romans, and they uh, made a good empire on their own. You know, they uh, lasted a long time until finally getting taken over by the Ottoman Turks. And that was that. Uh, the Byzantines were more diverse, you know, there were a lot of Greek, a lot of, um, Syrian, Armenian, you know, their, you know, I guess nationalities were, uh, just kind of all over the place. They weren't strictly, you know, one group of people. Anyway, um, as time went on, a lot of these, uh, emperors and their, you know, dynasty were just, you know, filled with all sorts of, uh, I don't want to say strange tales, but, you know, just a lot of crazy stuff, and um, what they did inherit it from their, uh, you know, Roman brethren. Um, yeah, a lot of crazy, a lot of torture stuff. Um, you know, trickery, assassination attempts. So all this kind of went on in all these emperors' life. So you're lucky if you made it, you know, past a certain age, and you died without being poisoned or brutally assassinated. So um, in the 11th century, I want to say. Uh, this era right here, so between uh, 1057 and 1185 in Constantinople, Constantinople is Turkey now in case you didn't know, you had this uh, usurper pretty much. Alright, so by this point Byzantium um, isn't doing too well, they're being attacked by like a shitload of different people. Normans, which are like Christianized Vikings, you got uh, Muslim Turks, these uh, Arab Caliphates, all just kind of closing in. And just every emperor that, you know, popped up just wasn't, you know, doing the right job. Until this guy, or this clan, I should say, came around. So, you know, they were like anyone else. Um, started, you know, from the bottom, they kind of raised their way up the ranks. Military, mostly. And this particular guy, um, not the first in his clan to, um, or family to be a leader, but, um, I guess, one to shine through the ranks and leave a mark. Um, his name was Alexios Komene, and um, we know a lot about him, and you know the family in general from his daughter Anna Komene, which uh, documented everything, pretty much just on um, you know pencil paper, wrote everything down that she saw. You know she might have bent the facts a little bit, but um, like a lot of this stuff is it kind of reads like a like a story, I guess. And um, what they tell me in the book, it's uh, you know some of it was true. Maybe some of it was kind of, you know, heightened a little bit. They had some, like, juicy details, but, you know, I don't know. Um, a lot of it sounds like it, it kind of really went on, you know, and from the descriptions, yeah. So anyway, um, this particular dynasty, the uh, Comene dynasty, uh, were u usurpers. Well, Alexius was anyway. So usurper means kind of like pretty much taking the seat. You, you see opportunity and you take it. 
That's pretty much what that means. In this case, like a military kind of revolution thing going on. Kind of would just, you know, him and a bunch of his boys, you know, rode on in to uh, Constantinople and just took it over. We're like, now we're in charge, and so is my family. Now, you know, a lot of people, you know, didn't warm up to this right away, and a lot of people were just out to get the guy. They're like, you know, how dare you? And he was like, eh, screw you, uh, I'm the boss. And um, he kicked ass and took names, pretty much. And not just that, he proved really worthy when he started winning a lot of battles. So he, like I said, he was, he was attacked on all fronts. Turks, Arabs, Normans, you name it. They were after him and his, um, you know, capital, his kingdom. And he defended it. And, um, yeah. And he just, you know, he gained back some coastal cities all over. He, he was a well-respected guy, you know, until, until the Crusades came over. You know, he was asking for help by the Pope. And the Pope, you know, got his wires crossed. was like, okay, well, I'll send all the armies of uh, Western Europe. And, you know... Alexius was like, wait, wait, that's not what I asked for. Eh, too late. So anyway, um, it wound up working in his favor a little bit. He kind of, um, you know, did some, uh, you know, bending of the arm to get these uh, Western Europeans to kind of like side with him a little bit. Some played ball, some did it. But um, long story short, he uh, his dynasty, you know, lasted a while. It, you know, like this book in particular kind of details the rise and fall of them. That's... You know, this is this is this is the first guy. This is Isaac Comne, and this is Alexius, and his sons are over here, Manuel, John, so and so, and um, yeah, they were all pretty competent. It's like the last, the last um, emperor being uh, Andronicus, just, uh, kind of an awesome name, which is like a tyrant, really mean guy. So he had a, lo a long line of all these decent emperors. And then, like, the last guy who took charge. And, um, things just fell apart. And, um, yeah, things kind of went downhill. I mean, it was a resurgence at the time when this dynasty took over. Um, they call it the Khamenei Restoration. Meaning he, you know, when things were looking down, he just kind of propped everything back up again. And it was good, you know. Love or hate the guy, you know. Um, people were on the side in the beginning, but... You know, he had to prove a point and, you know, put people in line and just show he meant business. And he got it done. And he did a really good job. So, yeah, you know, one of my favorite, you know, I guess Byzantine emperors had, or I guess like, you know, dynasty, uh, has to be one of these guys. You know, there's other ones too, but I don't want to make this longer than it has to be. I just wanted to talk about uh, this family. So, as this family's, you know, coming about, a lot of them, you know, do things you would hear like a lot of Western uh, Europeans would do. They would marry off their family members to different, you know, princes and kings and queens to, you know, gain advantage. And it worked, you know. Was it always in the individual's, you know, favorite decision? Probably not. But, you know, when you want control and influence, you gotta, you know, break the rules. Um... Anna was, uh, you know, thirsty for power, and her husband at the time, you know, was kind of like a, you know, he, he was kind of a big shot, but kind of wasn't, and she wanted to, you know, make him, uh, you know, the next emperor after her father passed away, but then, like, the son intervened, and it was pretty much, like, I, I guess the best way to describe it was, like, uh, you know, um, family issues, pretty much. And it didn't really tear the family apart, but, you know, a lot of trust issues went on in the household. So everything you could think of that you've seen on TV through families like the Borgias, you know, the Tudors, that all happened with them. A lot of lying, a lot of cheating, a lot of killing and poisoning. All that happened here in this family. And it's a bit of an Eastern flavor. Like, it's really a shame that no one really kind of, like, tackled the story and did a series about it, because I think it would take off. That's a shame. I mean, if I had the money, I would do it myself, but whatever. So yeah, that's the Khamenei dynasty. A Greek Byzantine family that had a lot of uh, tricks up their sleeve to get, you know, the job done. And, uh, you know, to win the people's favor in any way possible. 
whether it be through some, you know, shady means. They did the job, and they did it well. And it's a shame they ended kind of on a bad note, but, um, you know, things, you know, if anything, the family continued and ruled in other parts of Asia Minor, but, uh, Asia, blah, Asia Minor, which is Turkey. Um, you know, they lasted for a good time, and they were, you know, they were pretty notable for, um, you know, just being like all-stars in that uh, time period and world. So yeah, you know, if you guys find the time to look them up, like you don't have to, you know, read this particular book. I'm just saying it has all the uh, interesting facts, but you could find all this uh, online. You know, just type in the, uh, you know, Kamenei Dynasty. Anna Kamenei, she's a very interesting character. Like I said, she was the, you know, I guess, uh, documentarian of the family. She documented a lot of stuff and added her own flair to um, what she saw with her own eyes. So, I mean, you can't get no more, you know, factual than that. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff online, you know, about this uh, dynasty in particular. And um, it was cool. It was a great era. There was a lot of uh, cameos from, you know, Western uh, European crusaders. Um, yeah, it's just, it's fun. It, you know, it, their, their story feel, feels like a Hollywood story, put it that way. And um, I think, um, yeah, it deserves anyone's time who's interested in reading something... Uh, you know, with a little uh, Eastern Greek flavor, as opposed to you know, the West, you know, British king and queen story. You know, so if you're tired of all that, you know, teen crumpets, then, yeah, have some, uh, you know, gyros and uh, savaki, you know, and baklava. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's a, it's a good, this book was a good read, and the stories, which I'm sure you could find online, are, um, will keep you interested, put it that way. All right, guys. Well, that's all I have to say about uh, the Komenei Dynasty. Um, I think uh, you know they're worth your time, and uh, you should definitely check them out. All right, guys. Until next time. Peace.